Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So uh, today uh, we're back on the Safe project, uh, Safe Dial project, and we got the dial uh, made, at least a prototype, I guess, of the dial made in uh, a previous series of videos. And um, uh, as we discovered, we had some issues with the casting uh, where there was some uh, uh, inclusions. And um, anyway, I've got another casting. This one is actually for the back plate that the uh, dial will fit down inside of. And I have a suspicion we're probably gonna have the same issue with the inclusions in this casting as well. But I do wanna go ahead and go through the process. Uh, again, I'm, I'm really, uh, at this point, kind of just testing out my patterns, my uh, process for making it, uh, and then we're gonna have to go back and recast these. Uh, I will make a couple of comments, though, based on some of the feedback I got uh, on the previous videos, uh, particularly about the inclusions. I had a lot of people ask about, uh, you know, why not either braze or TIG uh, the voids up and then go back and remachine it. And, you know, I, I considered that, guys. I really did, but ultimately uh, I decided not to go that route uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, um, you know, this is brass that I'm dealing with here, and, and usually when you're brazing or even tigging, you're using a bronze material, and uh, I didn't think the color would match too well. Uh, but secondly, when you heat up, particularly with tig, when you heat that up, a lot of times you'll actually burn the zinc out of uh, the casting, um, and that can cause some issues as well. Uh, and ultimately, uh, I want it to be right. And, uh, you know, I've also had a lot of people say, well, why not just machined out of a piece of solid bar stock. And you know, that's definitely a, an option, uh, but it's probably not the option I'm gonna go with. And the main reason is, 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 is the price of brass. Uh, you know, I would need, for this piece here, I would need something that's at least a five inch diameter piece of brass. And realistically, I need something about six inches long to give me enough uh, material to chuck and hold in the lathe and be able to get the part out. And go price that. Uh, you know, you know, unless I had a piece sitting on the shelf somewhere, it's, I mean, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I mean, it's probably a, a piece of brass, even finding something, uh, you know, in the used market, you're still probably looking at a couple hundred dollars. And uh, I got plenty of scrap brass. And for me, this process that I'm going through is as much about really kind of just working on my skills, uh, particularly on the foundry side. Uh, you know, I'm not an expert when it comes uh, to pouring uh, either brass or aluminum. I'm learning as I go. I made some mistakes um, in this process of making these. And uh, largely through the community out there and some of the feedback I've gotten back from people who do have a lot more experience than me than this, uh, I think we know what we did wrong. And I think it really has a lot to do with the gate and riser system that I was using, uh, not really knowing what I was doing, um, giving us some problems where we got some turbulence in the pour. So we had some, excuse me, we probably had some gas in there. Uh, you get some, I think, hydrogen bubbles that we get in there and there wasn't a place for that to escape. And then also, um, you know, just the turbulence from the, the metal coming through and kind of swirling around. So. Uh, we're going to go back and actually try the foundry side again because I need to perfect those skills. Uh, I need to learn from the, my mistakes uh, so that the next time I have a project, and I've got some more brass projects that I need coming up, so this is going to be good practice for me. And um, um, So be looking for that down the road. We're going to be trying uh, the, the brass for again. But for today, we're going to go ahead and uh, machine this part out. And again, uh, it's probably not going to be a usable part. That's fine. I'm really just making sure that I got my process down and then when we get my next castings, uh, this should go very quickly. So let's get this chucked up in the lathe and uh, we'll kind of show you my plan uh, for turning this down. Just like before, um, we're, we're dealing with a casting here and this is one made from a pattern that we designed, drew up in SolidWorks and uh, printed out on a 3D printer. And uh, you know, again, I've got some work holding built into this pattern. Uh, so there's a kind of a spout here on the front and on the back, and that's just something for me to chuck on to get this going. Um, and most of that material is going to be turned off. There's also some kind of ridges in here, and that was more for the uh, brass to flow in there. This will all be machined out, but uh, it was kind of thin in this back section here, thin profile, and I was worried about not having being able to get these uh, the outside filled up. So I built into my pattern 
uh, some extra material there, mainly just to help flow it in there. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, I've got this put in here, we're just going to smooth this up, get this turned down smooth, I'm going to flip this around uh, in the chuck, chuck it up on the other side, and then we're going to machine the back of this, uh, and then anyway, we'll go through the process of uh, making this back plate. should work let's flip it around okay we're going to start by parting off uh, this little work holding piece i've got on here uh, we'll get in there as close as we can and uh, just uh, zip that off And now we're going to face this off on the back uh, and get a good uh, smooth surface back there. As with the piece before, you can see the inclusions here in the brass. And uh, again, I knew I was going to be running into this, but uh, we're going to go ahead and, again and finish this out uh, just because I want to kind of have a test piece that I can mock up on the, on the uh, safe door and uh, make sure everything's going to work right. And uh, then we'll be ready to go when we have our next casting. So uh, next step here is I'm going to just uh, true up the outside edge of this to give me something that I can chuck on. And I'm going to flip it around, uh, chucked on the outside diameter. I have um, flipped the uh, jaws around in my chuck here. Actually, it's a different set of jaws, but these are for gripping on the outside, outside gripping rather than inside gripping. And uh, what we're going to do is we got the, the piece here that's been flattened on the back side. We got the outside trued up, and we're going to put it into uh, the chuck, making sure that it is good and flat against the jaws. In fact, I'm going to, after that snug, just kind of tap it in place and we'll tighten that down. Now, it's, it's gonna be a little bit awkward working on this because uh, because of the size of this, I can't get it on these outside, uh, or the second step in here. I'm gonna have to work on this first step. So I've kind of got this piece here that's gonna be swinging around. It's gonna be in the way a little bit, but no big deal. I don't think it's gonna really matter that much, uh, uh, which is something we need to be careful of because we're gonna have these coming around and getting in our way. Uh, and just kind of keep that in mind as we're working. So again, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the piece off here that uh, I've been uh, ch uh, chucking to. Uh, but because of these jaws sticking out so far, I really can't get a parting tool in there far enough. So we're just going to have to whittle it away um, uh, on the lathe here, um, facing it off just a little bit at a time. So probably not going to bore you with all that process. We may show the first couple passes, but uh, get that down there flush. And uh, once we get that off, uh, we'll deal with uh, starting to hollow out uh, this inside. We've got that faced off now, and uh, what we're going to do next is uh, come in here and go ahead and drill a hole through the center, and uh, probably get that board out to size, which I think is .950 um, is what that needs to be, a, a hole going through there, and uh, then we'll start working on uh, cleaning out the inside of that out, 
and getting it where that safe dial will fit right down inside of it. So let's uh, go ahead and punch that hole in there. We're going to go after this um, for the boring bar actually to just face off the inside of this uh, and uh, the reason I'm doing that is because the boring bar is, is made to fit up into a curve and we're going to be actually really if you think about it kind of boring in here but we'll be facing down in there but we need a straight edge coming in the side here so uh, I think it's going to be the best tool to do this with and uh, we just need to get that cleaned out pretty good and then we'll get it to the right thickness in the bottom and to the right diameter around the outside. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just start removing some metal right now. Well, everything's going good on this, but I have kind of hit a little bit of a roadblock, not so much with the machining, but I've run into a challenge here on getting some measurements and some stuff like that. So uh, here, you know, my, my goal here is, is I need for this bottom plate in here to be a quarter of an inch thick um, to kind of fit over uh, the, the piece on the safe. And the problem I've run into is I, I don't have any type of measuring tool to reach up in this hole and get back behind there and measure it. Now they make uh, special micrometers for doing exactly that. I just don't have one. So um, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right here uh, and I'm going to uh, try to find the right tool uh, and come back probably next weekend and finish this out. And there's one other little problem that I run into and that is, is when I punch this uh, hole through here, I got a burr on the back of this. I can feel it with my finger and it's, it's probably going to interfere with that measurement. But again, I don't have something to reach into that hole and deburr the back of a hole. And, and they make that. I mean, uh, Noga makes a nice little uh, deburr for reaching into a hole, uh, similar to the, you know, like the little deburring tool that I use on the, the outside of holes. So anyway, I'm going to have to get a few couple of little things uh, that'll make finishing this job up easier. Uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some, some um, inclusions in here, although this is not nearly as bad as I did on the dial. Uh, the back side up looks pretty bad, but the inside actually looks pretty good. You know, it, it, we may get lucky and this be a usable part, but um, we'll just have to see once we uh, machine the outside ring here because that's really the only part of this that's going to be visible is this outside ring because the dial will actually fit down in here and of course the back's going to be up against the safe so the only visible part will be this outside ring so anyway we're making progress on this uh, but like i said we're going to put this project on hold uh, probably until next week and uh, uh, this week i'll be uh, getting a few little tools in here to add to my toolbox that will help me finish this out all right, so that's a wrap for this week. Uh, we'll finish this up next time. And uh, like I said, we got to uh, get this uh, to the right thickness, get the back in here to the um, uh, where the dial will fit down in here. And then we're going, and also we're going to bore this out, finish boring it out exactly to the right size. Not anything major, 
just don't have the right tools to measure it right now. And uh, once that's done, again, I'm going to make a little fixture uh, that this will fit up onto that will tighten up and then that will allow me to turn the outside uh, of this to get the, the profile on there that I want. So um, anyway, we're making progress. Um, and again, uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, this one is really more for practice and kind of perfect my technique. Uh, and then we're going to recast these uh, uh, patterns and, um, and do, an do another set here uh, soon. In fact, I've actually had a viewer that's contacted me that's got the same safe that I do, and he needs a new dial for his. So I'm probably going to be making two more of them uh, down the road. So as long as I'm making one, I'll just make an extra one for him uh, at the same time. So that'll be a wrap. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. As always, please leave me some comments. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do that as well. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot.